So how did this study begin? You know, when I sort of think about it, studies begin with chance events. And the chance event was Ramji came to Stanford and came and met me in my office. And he was telling me as to how they were doing these extraordinary things, providing science education to students. You know, the interesting conversation that we had was, uh, I was asking him, why are you doing this? And he said, well, I want people to be more curious and more confident. And Ramji can later kind of weigh in on this. And at which point I said, but, uh, you know, are you really teaching them science or could you teach curiosity and confidence in some other way other than science? And Ramji said, what? Uh, what, what might that be? And I suggested design thinking as a possibility. And then uh, I wrote in Phanish Puranam and Jasjeet Singh, two of my wonderful friends from INSEAD. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to do like a randomized field experiment to find out if design thinking really improves creativity, confidence, and one form of compassion, empathy, or perspective taking more precise. Our mission has always been to spark curiosity, nurture creativity, and instill confidence and caring through hands-on experiential learning. So when Huggy said, let's talk about design thinking, we were also looking at how to promote the idea of innovation in the villages because we need people who can solve their own problems. Fanish, Jasjeet and I, along with some colleagues of uh, Ramji, we went to one school. I have to tell you, I had tears in my eyes, as did Fanish, because it was a young girl who stood up and sang a song to welcome her. And the song is by a young girl who says, I'm a girl and you say, I can't have access to education. And that's when we thought design thinking might actually have a significant impact more on women, young girl students as opposed to male students. There were a lot of things that surprised us, Christine. Like a lot of the standard psychological instruments that are there, you cannot give it to Indian school children. Another big surprise for us was we were amazed as to how fast the students took to design thinking. From our perspective as people who did this study, I think our audience is people such as Ramji and his colleagues, but also people in the schools of education. People in education are radicals with the rest of the world, but very conservative when it comes to themselves. And so our hope is this creates a little bit of debate wherein we ask ourselves, what do American schools do about bullying? They do preaching. It's a bad thing to do is what they tell you. Is that going to do anything? Maybe a better way to actually deal with bullying is maybe exposing people to design thinking, because if you're able to understand a customer or a user, presumably you would understand the peer at high school or school. Other audience I would add are government bureaucrats and policymakers. Almost every country in the world worth its salt. And certainly India has been talking about the need to create a more innovative society. And innovation doesn't happen by saying, be innovative. You need to break it down and figure out what are the components, the behaviors that go into uh, making a person innovative or a good problem solver. So design thinking is clearly at the foundation of this. One of the biggest things, challenges in, in a lot of uh, societies is people don't believe they can do something you're learned helpless. And you need to bring a shift from learned helplessness to learned optimism. So a study like this, I think have profound implications. How contagious kind of enthusiasm is, all of us were profoundly affected by the study. It's not like you go and do the study, it changes you kind of as a person.
Ours, they say, is an age of Aquarius now. It's an age of experimentation. Hopefully, that's what all of this leads to is the, is the hope I sort of cherish, you know.